good afternoon or good evening, whenever and wherever you may be listening. This is Southern Gospel Point of View Podcast. On the line, I've got my very own cousin uh, outside of blood, praise the Lord, Mr. Reggie Taylor. He's up there in Sevierville, Tennessee. And then on the line, I have got Mr. Brad Steele. Brad has um, multiple, if I'm not mistaken, multiple YouTube channels, I think, or at least part of them. Um, The one that I'm most familiar with has uh, nearly 200,000 subscribers, over 26 million views. Uh, He is songwriter, singer. He is newly married. I say newly. Uh, We'll talk about that. Um, Dove Award nominee, and um, that was with the Collingsworth. Is that right? That is correct. Four, four song they, they did. So, man, we're just going to get right into it. And first of all, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being here, sir. Oh, it's good to be here. Good to be here. I've been looking forward to this. We, we years ago, probably two years ago, we talked with your dad mm-hmm. and uh, had a great conversation with him. And he told us to get you on the show. And mm-hmm. I don't know what has happened, but two years later, we got you. So, um, well, it's been a hectic couple of years. So, it has. Yeah. There's been absolutely every excuse known to man that we could claim in the last two years. Literally. So, there's there's no hard feelings whatsoever. That's, that's yeah. right. And we've made up a few, you know, my, yeah. my dog got meningitis, you know, there whatever you it may be, we, we've, we've used it or we'll try to use it. So, <laughs> You know, this is Southern Gospel point of view. Our listeners know that. Um, But uh, just to kind of fill you in, we started back in 2017, and uh, we started as a podcast, just three guys playing around. And um, then it ended up going into uh, internet radio. Uh, And so we kind of focused more on that because we couldn't play music on our podcast, which is, sure. we were trying to do that. And, um, uh, that, yeah. that didn't end up well. And so, um, we finally got to the end of that season of radio, um, the beginning of this year and, or about the middle of this year. And so Reggie and I decided let's just focus on the podcast and let's, let's try to fill our listeners in instead of with the music maybe with small snippets, you know, um, but more so behind the scenes, you know, such as you, a songwriter, a singer, you're part of a singing family, the Steels, you're in ministry there at your church. Um, You also have secular ties with, you know, you guys off air, we're talking about um, sports, things like that. You're, you're highly involved in that. So you just tell us a little bit about yourself to get us started off. Oh, Lord. Um, Well, you know, obviously, grew up on the road with the family. And uh, of course, I was so young at that time. I mean, I I came up and sang, you know, a couple songs a night, but usually I was just, you know, running around doing whatever kids did, you know. Um, And then uh, we came off the road. I went to middle school, high school, college, all that, and uh, went to junior college and then university and got all that done. And then uh, it was about that time, you know, that the Steels were back on the road in a part-time capacity and we're looking for somebody to just come in and uh, sing with them. And I was like, well, you know, (laughs) isn't <laughs> you know because before that option had been thrown around but i was in college i just wasn't able to to do it but now it was uh, you know I, I had more but again it's part-time at the time capacity so i joined in and you know that was right around when i had started writing and so we started recording some stuff and doing some some stuff like that and so that and then all the while we have our church at home, which started up during that time. And that's a, that's a big part of, of what we all do. And so, um, yeah, all that, all that was kind of going along. And, uh, then 2020 is, uh, when the YouTube thing 
started um i was actually very um whoops had a pop-up come up on my computer i was actually very uh fortunate you know just happened to work out timing wise that i started the channel and then you know the the pandemic started and of course that's a terrible thing that's right. that's not a good thing but um it was good for youtubers you, you, youtube wise everybody was at home you know, yeah. with nothing to do so uh i started making videos just because you know we were all at home bored and uh started taking off and um then the next thing you know it's like you said it's at nearly two hundred thousand subs a couple years later so um and that was something that i was doing for fun and now it's become you know um a legitimate means of income for me um right. but also um it's a place to put my music and reach an audience that we wouldn't normally reach i mean you know sure. because there there are people that have heard some of my music and some of the steels music that just wouldn't have ever come across it sure you know and so that's really cool and um so that's that's been a just a wonderful thing to have the youtube channel and uh so yeah that's kind of i've kind of got <laughs> i've kind of got my hand in about seven different cookie jars is you know <laughs> the youtube and then you know we signed with stowtown records yeah in well we signed with them in 2019 and then our first album with them came out in 2020 so <laughs> great pandemic starts and then we come out with an album so there you go right it was like great um but uh you know, so we have that, and then um, you know, I'm involved in other songwriting groups, and there's the church, and so there's a lot of different things that I'm involved in, and it kind of all comes together to become what I do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, it's amazing how we can do so many things, and then we go to bed at night. And it doesn't make sense. Like, how did I do all of that? Yeah, and and yeah. for me, it, it's it's one of two things. How did I do all of that? Or um, I feel like I haven't done anything. Right. And and yeah. I'm sure, you know, with everything that you've got going on, it's the same thing. Well, um, and what's amazing is being involved in so many different things. You have people, say, at our church, you know, you, you have some of, uh, you know, some of our older people in our church who they don't go on YouTube, you know, right. a lot. So they don't even know that I have, you know, they're the people, yeah. some of the people in my church, you'd be like, Hey, I have a YouTube channel. And they'd be like, what? Yeah. yeah they, you have a, what? Yeah. yeah. I, one of the kids in our church came up to me the other day and we're like, I, I was on YouTube and I was, I was looking for the song from the new Disney movie and, and you popped up and I watched your video. And, uh, it's like, you know, I'm trying to, keep the lives separate here but no, not really but <laughs> yeah. uh it's just crazy because you're involved in all these different things and some of the people from this crew don't even know that you right. have this going on you know so yeah those older folks like i have some medicine for that i'm so sorry you have that <laughs> you um, have a youtube yeah i'm so sorry <laughs> so uh, speaking of youtube and you know we'll kind of weave everything in we'll try to um but for the most part, other than your original songs, covers, pretty much just reaction videos. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was that was kind of the all, especially in the beginning. That was the brunt of it. Is I mean, those things are huge. Um, people giving their thoughts on on music, and you know, my the, some people do TV and movies and all that, but mine, mm -hmm. most of the music and. Um, you know, you give your thoughts and, and what I always tried to do is um, the, the reaction videos that I always found interesting were people that were involved in that, you know, you have a, you know, a, a singer reaction to somebody else's, you know, thing. And so it felt like somebody with some credibility that you, sure. you know, are interested in what they have to say. So I was like, if I can get the message across that I do this for a living mm -hmm. and, you know, maybe I'll, it'll separate me from, cause I mean, it's YouTube. There's a billion yeah. different things on there. I was like, maybe that'll separate me if I can get the message across that I am a singer songwriter and then start to upload, 
you know, use the popularity of the reaction videos to eventually upload my own music and have an audience for it. Right. And not only does that establish that indeed I do this. And so I have some credibility in talking about it, but also, um, it gets my music out there. So. Yeah. So of reaction videos, um, but what would you say ha- what was your favorite, um, whether it be the the song, the artist itself, or the actual reaction from from yourself and from the audience? Is, is there one that you could pinpoint? Um, well, the the acapella music community is like you know they're they're tight knit, and they uh, I've I've been able to listen to so many acapella groups there's a country group there's a pop group there's all this Mm -hmm. stuff and those are i mean i always love listening to the harmonies and that's one thing growing up around gospel music is you hear that harmony all the time and so you kind of gravitate toward it so i love listening to that kind of stuff there's some amazing singers that i didn't even know in in the philippines their music scene is unreal Uh, they've got some incredible singers over there and um, that again, I would have never known if not for just people suggesting them in YouTube comments. And so there's some of those, I, I think, uh, some of the, and I got to work on this cause you know, I always wanted to be genuine on there. And so whenever I would listen to, you know, somebody sing and they'd be doing really good, man, I was, I want to, I want to show the emotion that I would show in the car, you know, riding around with my wife. Right. You know, just with the reaction to what's going on. And um, in my old apartment, I had so much room, you know, to where I could just kind of be a goofball. And, you know, which is which is something I think people enjoyed. And now we've moved in this place I've been now. It's very convenient and cozy, but like I've got a keyboard here and a desk here. So I kind of kind of confined. Right. So I'm less uh, I'm less active in the videos these days but uh those are some of my favorites though is is when you know you just because sometimes you just don't feel like filming anything Mm -hmm. uh, but those days when you're just feeling good and you're enjoying the music and you can just be a goofball on camera those are always some of my favorites (laughs) you know yeah you mentioned that um acapella community uh of course Uh, you, you know the the group uh who is it a, a, a Christian group a cappella uh, from way back. Um, oh, what is his name? I can't remember his name right now. But um, th- I knew that. Of course, growing up in church, I knew a cappella singing. Mm-hmm. But man, it, it kind of hit hit the fan. It was in two thousand, maybe I don't know, fifteen, sixteen. There was a, a television show called The Sing Off. Yeah, and from that it was home free yeah uh pentatonics um was it uh all of those guys well my wife absolutely loves home free and and i'll give you one guess who she loves the best the gotta be the bass guy yes yes (laughs) i thought i thought our marriage was doomed when he hit that low note on ring of fire because <laughs> she went absolutely crazy and so since then i've been trying to learn to sing bass but i've yeah. yet to get to that <laughs> that point <laughs> oh, <here> we, go. <laughs> we have a pen of, we have pentatonics uh christmas cd uh um, got a bunch uh, of them yeah. oh yeah my my wife has a few of those and um but i'm a home free guy um no, i yeah. was i was watching it live when he hit that that low note and i thought Somebody better sign him right now, yeah. man. Yeah, <laughs> cause that carrot. The um, one of the judges, he was he used to sing for uh, Boys to Men. Mm-hmm. I can't never think of his name, um, but uh, man, he was all over that guy. He stood up and he was like, "What?" And it was crazy. I mean, them them guy. But see, the like America's Got Talent. They have acapella groups on there too that do certain right. things, mm-hmm. and. um I, which I like if you, if if you got a group that can and I'm with doing this show you know we, we review music and we and and the music itself and the, the words and then the song the singers and things acapella is in a in a thing of their own because yeah. 
when they do sing, you can hear each part. And that's what I always listen to is each part. And I just I close and I'm like, good grief. These guys are hitting each chord and what they're supposed to be doing. And so I, I'm, I'm with you, Brad. I, I think they, uh, I love that stuff. I'm, I'm all for it. Oh yeah. And I, and I'd already known about pentatonics. I mean, cause they came along probably a decade ago. And, and so I knew about them and then home free I had heard of, but then once I got into the YouTube thing, you know, was, they, their, their fans are called uh home fries <laughs> and they, uh, they just, man, they just flock to anything that has to do with home free. And, yeah. um, and they've, and you know, anytime I post an original song or a cover of something, there's somebody always one of the first ones is, man, I'm a home fry. I didn't know you could actually sing. And, you know, um, so, but there's a couple of others. There's, I will say, uh, I gotta give a shout out to a group called Voctive. They are, yeah. um, I just, we actually just went and saw them, uh, last week and do their christmas concert locally and um they don't they don't have like the beatboxing or anything they're they're just it's just angelic i mean they, yes, yes they get up there and start singing and it's you know it's amazing and uh tiffany coburn a member of the group she's a solo artist with stowtown mm-hmm. records and then uh the whole group is signed with uh club 44 records which is a label run by wayne hahn and uh right you know, Joel Lindsay who are involved in Stowtown. So um, it's been, and, and that's what has been one of the coolest things is when you, you know, I started doing these videos with no idea what would happen. And then out of nowhere, Tim Faust of Home Free, the bass singer is commenting on wow videos. And I got to interview uh, Austin Brown, who sings tenor for them. And, um, you know, he wants to sing together and, you know, he is, get in touch with me about singing with him and I've gotten to know the members of Voctiv and uh there was one time there was you know on on the app uh TikTok there was a song that had gotten huge over there um and I you know did a video about it this guy comments he's like hey, I'm the drummer on this song you know I, I played drums on this and uh so i'm you know i'm sitting here just in my house you know uh you know on a random you know thursday talking to the guy that played drums on the biggest song in the world wow. right now that's you awesome. know that's just a cool that's what there's a lot wrong with the internet and don't we all know it but yeah um, every once in a while there's something really neat that happens on here well, and, that's pretty uh, good yeah yeah that's crazy um, I was I was looking it up, and it's been good Lord years ago. But on the, um, you know, the Gaithers had, used to have the TV show, mm-hmm. and one of my favorite groups, and me and Jamie's talked about this before. They were uh, they sung a cappella, and it's um, the Fairfield Four. Oh. I don't know if you've ever seen them. Um, it was four black men. They had um, overalls on, and mm-hmm. uh, they sung the song "Dig a Little Deeper." Oh yeah. Oh man. Then and that one guy, he gets real high, and uh-huh. I, I was like, "Go ahead." I mean, yeah. I was yeah. like, I Very thought they had church right there. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 well, that's awesome. I, we need to get in contact because uh, I like to, you know, I want to talk to these home free guys, man. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah. We, yeah. we, I took my wife to see, um, home free up in Knoxville several mm-hmm. years ago. And she absolutely just loved it. She was too scared to go talk to him, you know, after the yeah. show or anything, but, sure. but she absolutely loved it. Hey, t- tell us about, um, y- you recently got married and I- I'm wanting to say that it was what back in April, May, March. March, something like that. So how has life changed since you've gotten married? Uh, well, you know, we got married in March, very beginning of March. And, uh, so I guess we're, you know, like nine months in, I think something mm-hmm. like that. So we're still in the early stages. Um, it's been great though. It's been great. You know, we, um, we're one of those that we, we were just, we're such goofballs and <laughs> we never lost that element of friendship, you know? Yeah. 
in the beginning. So we were just, we, we were giddy about, uh, you know, just getting to live together. And, and, you know, we, the, the biggest obstacle we've had, and I know it's early. So there's people watching that have been married a lot longer who are going to say, Oh brother. But I will say in our early, you know, first year, nearly we made the wise, not so wise decision to get a golden retriever puppy. I mean, oh. right. We got home from our honeymoon. And I think five days later, we went and picked him up and I mean, he was, he was two months old and uh, you know, we were, we were really happy about it, but man, that was, uh, that was the biggest because he was just, you know, that's a, that's a responsibility that people yeah, I don't right. realize when they get, you know, I don't think we realized just, when we knew it was going to be a responsibility. I don't think we knew it was going to be as big of a responsibility because he was, he was an aggressive puppy he was uh oh, wow. you know, he wanted he wanted to bite and he was you know a lot of rough play going on and so we had to get him into some obedience classes sure. you know and uh finally he after a little while he started he has started to calm down and now he's just he's great you know we we just love it and and so in a way now that it's over it's like man maybe it's good that we kind of had to Good, because if there's anything that we would, you know, fight about early on, it was, <laughs> it was just, you know, because he's biting you and you're mad about that and you can't really, I mean, you know, he don't know what he's doing. So right. it's, yeah. you know, the only person there to yell at is <laughs> your, each your other. <laughs> yeah. But uh, this was you know, your idea was, to get this dog. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it was both. I mean, we, we knew and we were going to get the dog anyway, but. We didn't. I don't think we had planned on getting it that early. It's just these people that we had been in line to get a dog from this place that that you know breeds golden retrievers, and they just happened to, you know, have a whole bunch of them right after we got oh, married. Oh yeah, so, perfect timing, right? Yeah, but uh, yeah, but as far as I mean, it's just been you know it's been great, and um, we uh, you know it's just it sounds so cheesy and cliche, but there's a, you know, to, to know you're with the person that just, you know, God, you know, put them here mm -hmm. for not, not for you. I don't sound selfish, but with you in mind, you know, that there's just no doubt about it. So yeah, it's been, it's been a great first, however many months, nine, I think. Yeah. Well, I, I, <laughs> Jamie, you asked him, you know, how's it, how's his life changed since he's gotten married? I was going to pop up and say, he's found out who the real boss is. <laughs> no, that is true. That is, that is true. Um, you know. So is it Miss Emily or is it the dog? Well, no, no, that's interesting. Um, because that, it varies by day. You know, <laughs> if she's, if she's feeling tired one day, she hands the reins over to him. And, <laughs> It's never me though. It's either right. her or the dog. It's never me. <laughs> All right, Brad, let me ask you this. All right. So this is a marriage question oh, for you. Okay. What what is the best and the worst advice about marriage you've been given? Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> man, I don't wanna I don't wanna step on anybody's toes. I would that just I'm saying just don't say a name. <laughs> yeah, the the best advice was that you know, again, it sounds cheesy, but the you know the the never stop going on dates and never stop making each other laugh, you know, never stop laughing, you know, always, yeah. always be, you know, all the stuff about just being patient and uh, I always like when they say, you know, whenever you get into an argument or. Uh, something like that. It's always the two of you versus whatever the problem is, you know, it's, it's you two against problem and it's not you versus them, you know? So that's something that I thought was good advice going in the worst advice. I mean, it was, and this is why I was hesitant to say this because there were so many people that said this and I don't want <laughs> anyone watching to be like, Oh, he's talking about me, but just <laughs> all the people that were like, literally i couldn't believe the people that were like you're gonna hate it i mean they they were just they I mean, you know it would be it would be two months till the wedding and somebody would be like well you got two months left to enjoy 
your life, you know, and they're, yeah. and they're not kidding. Like they, these are people that, I mean, they were being dead serious. Like you got two months left. You better soak it up. I was like, man, thanks for the encouragement. Right. <laughs> yeah, thanks for, thanks and these, for really. These are people that you're like, man, they have the perfect marriage. And then they tell oh, you yeah. something like that. And you're like, oh no, yeah, Maybe that's like, true. <laughs> man. Yeah. But, and, and some of, and some people were just being funny, you know, yeah. just trying to be, but then some, it was like, man, they never cracked a smile. They were like, <laughs> you know, like it's all over now. You know, yeah. And I'm like, man, <laughs> you, you know, what, who did y'all marry? Right. <laughs> you know, I, I, my wife and I've been married for 20 years and we had, uh, we had some of the same things too, uh, both good and bad. Um, but I tell you, probably the best advice that I would give right now. And, and we did this. It was about four years before we had kids. Uh, and I realized some folks cannot have kids or they decide not to. And, you know, that's, that's all their, their decision and their business. But, but um, you know, I'm a pastor. And so as I can counsel uh, couples that are getting married, I try to urge them, you know, take some time, even though you've been dating for a while, you've maybe been engaged for a while, whatever it is, just take a couple years maybe before you ever really start to try to have kids or have yeah. a puppy um, oh. and, <laughs> and, and yeah. really get to know one another. Because for me, I felt like I knew my, my girlfriend slash fiance, but when, when the door shut behind us, when we hmm. got home, I'm like, who is this woman? <laughs> who is this is not the same yeah. one and so i you know we kind of had to relearn one another you know mm -hmm. um and, and not not even in intimacy just you know walking through the house you know there there's it's different because yeah. mom and dad's not right around the corner and you know things yeah. like that so uh take some time and really get to to know one another that that's that's always my advice now um i try to stay out of the the other stuff because yeah. personalities differ, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now so, you're living with them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah. You used to see all you did was drop them off at, the, at their door yeah, and go you, home. You don't <laughs> yeah. go to your own. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and I really don't know that if it, that it's a good idea to try to send your wife to maybe obedience classes. I, I feel like that's, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that's yeah. not, it works with thing. the dog. It works with the dog, but, um, now they could get away with it sending us away. I'm oh yeah, <laughs> uh, they they probably hold obedience classes for husbands somewhere. Yeah, yeah oh, I, I guarantee it. I guarantee it. And that, and they have created that class. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they teach it. Yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it it it's it's designed for men, but it's for women by yes. women. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Brad. So. Sorry, Jamie, but I got to jump into this song. Got I want to, I want, I want to know about this song. I know you were part of the, the writer on, um, on uh, this song. Um, who uh, can you tell us a little bit about the song, how it came about, and um, who all wrote it with you? A uh, hundred different altars. A hundred different altars. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes. Um, well, I wrote that with Joel Lindsay, who is just a household name in terms mm -hmm. of, of songwriting and, and gospel music especially uh and then a guy named brad guldemond and uh actually i mean that was a song was written this year this spring uh so very recent um i just i i had an idea for that uh years ago i mean i a couple of years ago i just remember driving down the road and i don't know I wish I had some big dramatic story of what made me think of it, but it was like, you know, like what about, you know, a song called a hundred different altars where a bunch of different people who don't know each other and will never know each other. And, you know, from all over the country and the world are all going through different problems, but they're all going to the same God for peace mm -hmm. and comfort and relief. And, um, I was, you know, it, unfortunately, that happens so often. You have an idea that you think's good, and then it just gets pushed to the back of the closet or something, right. and you forget about it. Well, and then a couple of years later, earlier this year, I went to a songwriting retreat that was put on by Joel Lindsay, and um, they they draw names out of a bucket, and they put you in groups of three, 
and they draw it at random. Whoever you get put with, you go to a room, you write a song. And so I got put with Joel and then the guy, Brad Gouldemond, uh, who I had never written with, and then Joel I've written with many times. And so we went to this room and we're throwing around ideas and, uh, um, you know, everybody's just saying different things. And so I finally, I, I don't know what made me think of it, but I just said, what about a hundred different altars, you know, like a bunch of different people explained it and um, dead silence for about <laughs> 20 seconds. It's like, man, well, anybody else got an idea? And then Joel finally was like, man, that's great. Let's do that. So uh, we got the writing and, and I credit uh, Joel with, you know, the um, getting so personal on the, on the verses, because yeah. that was not the direction I was thinking at all. I kind of had that rough layout of the chorus and man, he just, he was like, we need to, you know, he just started using people's names, you right. know, just, just everyday names you hear and trying to fit as many different problems as you mm -hmm. can in a tiny verse and um so we just started you know writing about people you know i think that anybody listen to this song you either find yourself in there somewhere or somebody that you know and love is somewhere in the song because right. you know we try to hit on different issues but you know we leave it we leave it open to where they any you know any any different problem you can think of that people go through mm -hmm. is, is there in the song somewhere. And, um, so we, we wrote that and that was in May. The thing is the next week after this, I mean, actually about three days after this retreat, Wayne Hahn was coming to pick songs for our album. And, uh, so I didn't go to this retreat with the expectation of writing something for us. Cause I thought we already had enough, demos yeah. and we already had enough songs so i was just gonna go right and maybe somebody else get a hold of these i'm driving home and dad calls and almost jokingly he's like you write anything we can cut you know while you're there yeah because he like me he just thought we've got enough songs we've written you know and i said listen i said yeah because i wrote i think i wrote four songs that week and you know all of them i love dearly but there's something about this one I said, you know, I said, I kind of feel like if we don't cut this song, we're idiots. <laughs> I said, I feel like we're dummies if we don't cut this. And uh, I all I had was a little work tape that I sent to him. And uh, and he's pretty particular, in, you know, in terms of stuff we're going to cut. Mm -hmm. and he he listened and called back and he was like, yeah, I agree. We are we are out of our minds if we don't uh, if we don't give that a shot. So I kind of hurried through getting a demo done because I knew Wayne was coming to town. And so within three days, we're sitting there listening to a demo of it. And and Wayne was like, well, that's a no-brainer. You know, that, yeah. that was going on the record. <laughs> uh, so Joel said it was the fastest turnaround from a song being written at one of the retreats to being, you know, picked really? to be on an album three days you know yes yeah. he was like that's probably the fastest turnaround we've ever had good but uh he was like but i get it he's like you you can't pass it up so well, well it's definitely worth it um Thank you. we we played uh, i told you this before but we played in our last show um part of the first verse and we we played some of the chorus and uh we talked about this last piece at the end of the song towards the end of the song and and i want to play that and um i'd i'd really like to maybe pick your brain about this this phrase but let me do that now and then and then we'll talk some more every day the human race has a hundred ways to fall but every day heaven's grace hears each and every call is they're bringing him their illness confessing their addictions praying for their children and healing for their hearts. so as as this song played out <clears throat> you mentioned joel Lindsay started naming names and started bringing problems to the forefront 
Mm-hmm. And, you know, you're a part of a church. Now, um, your church is a little bit different than mine. You guys are more progressive. We're, we're, we are real conservative. We're an independent Baptist. But, but the thing that I have noticed, I've been in church nearly all my life, is a lot of the things in this song is kind of kept hush-hush mm-hmm. in churches. Yeah. And a lot of those, you know, we, we get up and preach, no matter what your problem is, God can handle it. But we don't bring those problems out in church. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. But but this has, from financial ruin to a single mother, or or I think one of the the, ver- the maybe the second or third person is is in a hotel room with a young lady that's pregnant, mm-hmm. and she doesn't know what to do. Right. Um, I'm telling you from. <laughs> From that first verse, I knew something was going to happen. I, I didn't know what to expect, but especially when you get to this that I just played, there's, and I didn't write the lyrics down, but it talks about there's a hundred different ways to fall mm-hmm. and there's a hundred different altars, but one loving God of mercy meets them all. Can mm-hmm. can you tell us what the thought process was that went into? I, I know you said it was nothing big; it was just a thought about a hundred different altars. But how how did it progress to have such weight in the lyrics? Oh man, um, well, like I said, you, you start talking about. I mean, the stuff that we don't like to talk about. I mean, in churches, which I think is just you know if you're out there and you think this stuff's not happening in your church it is i mean if you exactly yeah if you think there's not somebody who's addicted to something mm-hmm. uh, sitting on the pews in your church yeah you you need to get a clue i'm, I'm sorry right. you need you're, no, exactly you do. Right. you're right you need to get a clue yeah um and so you know look you can't ever go wrong with with hitting people where they live and you know like i said whether it's you or somebody you love and so we, you know, we spend the whole song talking about, I think, I mean, you know, all the different things and that people deal with. And then you try to sum it up there at the end. And the, and the other writer on this, Brad Guldemond, threw out this idea. You know, he's like, we keep talking about a hundred altars, a hundred people, all this stuff. He's like, what about something about how there's a hundred ways to fall? I mean, there's just so many ways to fall, and. You know, of course, scripture says we've all sinned and we've all mm-hmm. fallen short yeah. daily. You know, some of us, like me, hourly. I mean, you know, this <laughs> oh, yeah. I need, I need the every hour. I mean, right. Yeah. Second. yeah. Um, I've only I've only been up an hour today and I've probably already messed everything up. You know, <laughs> oh, you, yeah. know um, you know, we're like, this just so easy to fall. I mean, it's just there's, you know, there's different things throughout the day. Um but I think the lyric says, uh, every day the human race has a hundred ways to fall, but every day heaven's grace hears each and every call. Yes. And, um, and that's just, to me, that's just such a comforting thought, you know, to know that <laughs> even though there's so many ways to fall and we do, and we will, and we have, and we fall, I mean, we're just, we're, we're a flawed, flawed people. That's right. And, uh, to know that even when we do with all these different ways, all these different people, all these different problems, he hears every single, every single call, you know, and, and he can take it all. He's big enough to hear every single one of us to take every single one of our issues. You know, I think so many times, like you said, James, when there's people in our churches that, you know, we don't talk about, the really hard stuff you know it's Mm -hmm. easy to get up there and be vague and say you know whatever you're going through today but you know we don't know what to do sometimes when we have somebody when we have a teenager who comes in and says hey i've been self-harming you know because i've been getting bullied or you know i've been i've been having suicidal thoughts or you know we we just get you know we, we don't know what to do sometimes because yeah. that's heavy and that's hard and all that. So we, we can't even handle, you know, sometimes one person, we don't even know what to do. That's right. But I think about how big God must be 
to hear all of this, you know, mm -hmm. to take in all of the addiction and pain and suffering and, and problems and trials and to just, you know, give us all the peace we need and the, and the comfort we need. Right. That's just, uh, just another moment in life where you say, man, his ways are not ours, you know, that's right. Oh, yeah. That's why, that's why he's God and I'm not. Cause I mean, mm -hmm. I can, I, I lose sleep at night. If I know one person who's, you know, going through this horrible thing, but, but God's big enough to take all of it. And right. The, the weight of the human race and the, all the ways we fall, you know, um, so, and that's what we talked about, you know, when we were yeah. writing the song. Um, well, Reggie uh, said something in, in our last show and he was, he was dead serious when he said it. And, and if I'm not mistaken, Reggie, you may have said it twice just to make sure you were heard these guys and specifically you, because you were one of the writers, these guys need to win an award for this particular song. Oh, I, I mean, it's well, perfectly you. crafted. I mean, everything about even even the lyric video, which we did a show several months back, and I'm I'm going to tell them myself. Most of the times, I do not like lyric videos because it's just. It's just a soundtrack with cheesy stuff yeah. on the screen and, yeah. you know, and it, it's almost like an attempt to be relevant yeah. and it, it always fails miserably, but sure. this one did such a good job, you know, from, from each individual person and their circumstance, it told yeah. just watching it, even if you watched it, you know, with mute on, it would tell a story and you guys did a great job. Um, Thank you. I was trying to look up the name of the the guy that did the lyric video because he's done a few for us and and for other artists as well, and he just does such a great job. And with each lyric, you know, because I'm like you, I oftentimes I think that uh, the guy's name is David Brown. David Brown was okay. the guy who did the lyric video. I, I so many times with lyric videos, it just feels like they just wanted something to put with the song, mm. and yeah, you know. But um, I thought he did a great job of capturing each line of the song. Yeah. You know, he really did footage, and uh, really did. So yeah, it ended up being really. Yeah, good. And I'm telling you, and I'll say it again: these guys need to win an award. <laughs> I'm just telling you, this this song was um, and singing it. Y'all knocked it out of the park. I mean, yeah, thank you. I, appreciate I mean, that. knocked it clear out. I mean, um, gave me goosebumpies. I'm just gonna <laughs> go ahead, man. Um, it do was you, I'm sorry, Reggie. Do, do, Brad, do you think that if you were paired, I found it interesting that y'all were just pulled out of a hat. Mm -hmm. Do you think if you were paired with anyone else, this song would? have been different or do you think this was maybe this is how the song was going to be it just so happened that god used the three of you guys i i happen to think it would not have been the same because okay. i actually believe that to be fact because the truth is they picked the names the night before so that in the morning when we woke up we would know who we were writing with Okay. So it was kind of, we were getting ready to all go to bed. We were at this retreat center and they said, Hey, let's draw names for the morning. My name actually got drawn with two other people and they're great writers, you know? So I was, you know, great. All right. I was right with them. And I woke up next morning to get breakfast. And for whatever reason, no rhyme or reason, somebody walked up and said, Hey, we're, we're switching things around. You're with Joel and Brad now. Hmm. and it was like okay you know that's great too <laughs> and so i mean i i happen to believe that was probably a god thing of mm. god so oh, it let, was. Me, let me rearrange that yeah you know mm -hmm. nothing wrong with i mean and the song that the group that i was going to be in wrote ended up being great too i mean there's right. not a thing wrong with it it'll be a hit for somebody but um i i, I happen to believe that was a you know because i was not given a reason it wasn't like, hey, somebody in this group got sick, and, and it was right. not. It was just, hey, we're switching this. So going you know, back several years, it was almost like one of those butt god moments. Oh yeah, that's yeah. going <laughs> back, uh, Lord, a decade. Gosh, Has it been that long? Was. My yeah, goodness, I think he wrote that song. Uh, 
Yeah, 2012. So that was probably one of, as far as Southern gospel, that was probably one of the first viral movements, wasn't it? It definitely. I think. I mean, I may be biased, but I remember that being like, I was seeing everybody on Facebook with the picture, you know, that they mm -hmm. were putting on their profile picture. Um, definitely, yeah. I I had never seen that in Southern gospel before that. Yeah. Um, I, I, as it was happening, I was sitting back. And that was before we started this show, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've been, I've been pastoring for 16, 16 years, I guess. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that, that thought, but God, you know, I, I've preached it several times, but, uh, the, you guys did such a great job singing it, but the writing on it again, it was, it was amazing. And it, it kind of put, it put a point, uh, on the end of the thoughts that I have had. It, it was, yeah. it was great. But, that was all that was all dad. He wrote that one by himself, I believe. Oh, okay. So yeah, he was uh he's written quite a few <laughs> in his yeah. time. But uh yeah. yeah, but that one was uh and that was kind of when uh I wasn't a part of the group at that point, but that was when they kind of started to come back into mm -hmm. the scene was with that song. Yeah. Um and it ended up kind of catapulting them to kind of go back out there at least on a part-time right basis yeah. and uh that song was just a huge thing for for us and him and you know the whole crew i i don't know how many songs he's written with ricky atkinson <laughs> um but yeah. ricky is he's he's one of my we'll 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 go don't give him a Georgia. big hit. we'll He's, he's he's one of my homeboys. <laughs> oh, say amen right there. <laughs> he laughed. Amen. But yeah, he's uh, he's just right down the road from me, and we get together uh, not often, but we get together pretty pretty good. Well, he's uh, up here more than he is at home. Yeah, he's he's traveling a lot. Ricky, now. yeah, Ricky. Yeah. Uh, I remember being a, a kid. And I mean, he was over at the house every week, right? And I mean, him and him and dad, it was like they had a, you know, weekly. They 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 wrote uh, probably their most notable song would have been "Blessed Be the Name yeah, of the Lord." Be the name. Tony did uh, and had a number one song, Tony Gore, and then, yeah, uh, and then we redid it. Um, yeah, a couple years, years ago. ago right? Yeah. Um, that one probably their most notable, but they man, they wrote a good bit. <laughs> they they their catalog pretty long. Oh yeah, yeah. So before we switch gears to Christmas, uh, and and then we'll let you go. Um, years ago, I'm talking. How old? How old are you? Twenty nine. You're twenty nine. Okay, so years ago, I don't even remember which album it was, but your dad put it on one of the albums i'm your father i'm your son were <laughs> yeah. you the son singing oh yeah were you yeah that dude was me. i have two First girls time ever being in a studio really uh, yeah i have two girls all right two two daughters and one of them uh she's 16 one's about to be 13 but th this came out before uh i had kids and that song that stupid song, and I say stupid respectfully. Oh, I know what you mean. That stupid song made me want a son so bad. Uh, and then God said, no, I'm going to give you daughters. So I thought about rewriting it for a daughter, but I, I'm not smart enough to do that. <laughs> uh, you know, the funniest thing about that song is that years ago, probably about four years ago, on Father's Day, this guy and his son went viral singing it at uh his church for father's day so they sang it in their church and somebody i don't know if it was the guy's wife filmed it on the phone and uploaded it and it went viral well i'm scrolling i don't i don't know who the guy is i'm not facebook friends with him i'm scrolling facebook and i just see the video shared of like you got to hear this father and son so i click on the video not knowing what it is and they start singing our song. I was yeah. like, I was like, you got to be kidding me! And I mean, I, I'm talking about thousands upon thousands upon thousands wow. of views and shares. I messaged the guy. I said, you're not gonna believe that. I said, that's 
our song. I, I, I sang that originally. And of course he messaged back and was like, you've got to be kidding me. He's like, do you want me to take it down? I was like, no, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely not. Yeah. Can you imagine what a jerk I would have been if I, <laughs> if I would have said no? Take well, you it know down. that does happen. I'm I'm sure that you've oh. you've had some of that in in YouTube and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, hey, let's let's switch gears and we'll let you go. But last year, Reggie and I kind of went back and forth with, or not last year, uh, last episode about our Christmas traditions and things like that. And one thing that was the same with both of us is, you know, before we were married, we had Christmas traditions. When we started dating, there were some changes. When we got engaged, they changed even more. When we got married, they changed. When we had kids, they've changed. So, you know, I don't think any of my original Christmas <laughs> traditions are intact now. So you've been married, I think you said around nine months. So this is your first married Christmas together. Uh, Merry Thanksgiving together. So you tell us, you know, what what are some traditions that you've kept? Some maybe some new ones that you hope to make. Well, you know, I'm fortunate enough to still live close enough to the family that that we we still get together uh, every Christmas night um, to to do the gifts and eat and all that. Uh, but you know, it's funny because as a as a kid we we had traditions but there wasn't just a set time to do them i mean it was just we'll get to them at some point over the season um so i mean there's always the movies that that we had to watch you know every year home alone and oh yeah this the santa claus with tim allen you know but uh and always baking cookies and uh it's funny i, I cheap plug uh we, ha we have a christmas song called christmas more than ever um that we wrote it put out last year for last Christmas and um, it kind of talks about just uh, in the verses, especially kind of talks about the traditions that we just kind of took from our own lives, you know, turning on Bing Crosby and, you know, getting some hot chocolate and all that. But I, I, I remember going and looking at Christmas lights and uh, I, I did something for a, a DJ earlier this week where we were talking about Christmas traditions. And I said, you know, it's like when you got a mom like mine, it's just a decorating machine. You know, <laughs> she just she's all about decorating, and uh, so our house just looked like, you know, Christmas threw up. Yes, it looks like. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I mean, that's just you know, and what's you know, I was at my parents' house the other day, and they they've still got some of the same decorations from yeah then. Um, it's like you know, the little nutcracker uh, doll thing. So, um, so that's that's really neat. But uh, yeah, it's thankfully a lot of those traditions are stuff that you can still continue on, and you can still watch those movies and right. stuff like that. But um, but it does change over the years. And I will say, as far as new traditions, uh, me and my wife, we we uh, which this will be our first christmas as a married couple but even dating and engaged we we watch uh on christmas night after all the everybody's calmed down and the gifts are all open we watch it's a wonderful life yes. uh, which Thank i don't you. i you know i i never get emotional at movies ever i'm not a guy that gets emotional at stuff like movies end of it's a wonderful life Oh yeah. Every there's there's just the one tear every time. It's sacrilegious <laughs> if it doesn't roll down your face. Yes. <laughs> you're not you're you need to repent. If exactly. You, if you can watch the end of, but we watch that every um every it's like the, the last thing of Christmas is we, we close it down by watching It's oh, okay. a Wonderful Life. Uh so Christmas ends emotionally. <laughs> 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 but uh but our main tradition and y'all you know, this will start a debate. We, uh, which is what we've already done, but we, at October 31st, when it hits midnight to November 1st, come on, it all goes up. It yeah. all the, the tree, yeah. the, so we, uh, we had, I did a vlog, a video about it on, on my channel when we did it, but we were watching the clock and when it hit midnight from October 31 to November 1st. We told, I'm not going to say Alexa too loud because it'll start up, but yeah, uh, 
the the thing on the counter. We told her to start playing the Christmas music, and uh, we we got it going. So we've we have we've had our decorations up for over a month. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. We we have two down here now. Yeah. The other one up there, you could see a bunch of Christmas stuff. But uh, Reggie, I think you were you were kind of against early Christmas decoration, weren't you? Uh, you're like give Thanksgiving a chance. Was that right? I, I, I'm not against it. I, I want it put. I mean, I don't care if it's put up. I love Christmas. That's my favorite holiday. But oh, yeah. my biggest thing is when you go in the store, and oh, yeah. they've already got Christmas it's stuff. July up, and they've got Christmas. Yeah, stuff. I'm talking. I'm like, dude, yeah. can we hold up, man? I mean, you know, it's, well, Thanksgiving it's to me. I, I, I went to Cracker Barrel the other night, and they got the old country store out front. Mm -hmm. And of course, they've had Christmas stuff up since June. You know? yeah. Oh yeah. Well, we go. I don't know if this is just our Cracker Barrel or if this is all of them. We go to old country store tonight. The Christmas stuff's gone. Really? Oh, yeah. I'm saying. So you've had all year. This stuff's been up, and now it's December, <laughs> and we've got. You know, I I don't know. I'm like, what's what all the Christmas? I guess they're thinking like if they're gonna buy it, they'd have bought it by now. Yeah, they would have bought it by you now. Know? Yeah. I'm wow. Like, I just think with these stores, they like, it, you know, it's June. They got already got Halloween stuff out. And I'm like, we ain't even got to October. What are y'all doing? And then <laughs> when July rolls around, uh, you know, Thanksgiving stuff. And then August comes around, Christmas stuff's out. And I'm like, right. hold up. Can we talk? Can we call a timeout for just a second? I mean, what yeah, are we doing? Yeah. Can we, can we get it right? <laughs> Do it well, for them. I, I live in the state of Alabama where, you know, they don't start putting the Halloween stuff out, but when you start getting to the summer, that's when the, and keep in mind, state of Alabama here, that's when the <laughs> Alabama Crimson Tide football, yeah. Auburn football, that's when that's because it's not about, we're, we ain't thinking about, the around here, it's like, hey, yeah, it's, it's getting it's about that time. Alabama college football. College football. That's right. yeah. Yeah. College football, that's what, that's the holiday around here. Oh, yeah. We have, yeah. We have a holiday every Saturday in the fall. <laughs> yeah. Well, there was one, there was one, maybe a couple that wasn't too great of a holiday for you though oh yeah yeah, uh, yeah. I, I i almost wore my orange shirt but i didn't want to oh want to cause an issue but you right, wore for, your for orange toboggan so well i did but you're talking about for tennessee i'm assuming right yes yeah mm -hmm. they i i was kind of rooting for tennessee i i they just they ruined it in that south carolina game man yes that, yeah, mm -hmm. I think they all stayed on the bus. We're not real sure what happened there. Well, the defense definitely did. They yeah. well half half of them didn't wasn't there at the game. They didn't get to go. There was yeah. a there was an issue, so yeah. they didn't get to go to the game. So I was right. like, man, what is going on? Yeah, but I think Kendon Hooker got the raw end of the deal, not getting the high, but even being selected for the high. Yeah, he wasn't even wasn't even a candidate. Yeah, it was terrible. It was yeah. terrible. So, are you Alabama fan? I'm not. I, so, I mean, I grew, we talked about this before we went on. I grew up right outside of Nashville. I mean, I'm a football fanatic. Um, and I've always loved college football. I just never had a team because we were in Nashville. Oh, yeah. And the Titans, you know, were there. And obviously, you know, um, so I, I was all about that. I was, you know, I was like college football, but pro football was so like, you know what i was interested in mm -hmm. and so now here i am in the state of alabama when we moved here you know college football capital of the world that's right yeah uh, you, you got to choose you know so I, I decided to kind of pull for auburn mostly to uh, annoy my friends who are out <laughs> alabama <man. laughs> so I, I chose auburn but I've, i'm one of the only people in the state who's more interested in professional football on sundays than yeah. I am college. Like I, you know, people are baffled when you know church ends and I'm saying bye to everybody, and I'm like, all right, I gotta hurry and get I home. Gotta go. Watch the, you know, God bless everybody. I, I'm gonna try to. And they're like, well, what's on? What's what yeah. you gotta like the game? <laughs> the game was yesterday. <laughs> yeah, that, that's yeah. What, when I lived in in Knoxville, that's the way it was. It was, mm -hmm. it was Saturday football, and. Oh, yeah. 
the it's, folks that I knew, they weren't even Titan fans. So I thought that was a little strange, but there's, there's not, there's not a lot of Titan fans up here. That's more like my father-in-law. He lives here. He's a big Tennessee Vols fan, but he's a Green Bay Packers fan, huge Green Bay Packers yeah. fan. Yeah. And so, all right, Packers uh, so, are one of those. Packers are one of those. They've got a following just all over the country. Oh yeah, you can go about anywhere and find fans of them. So. And it's well, not going to matter whether they're up or down. They're, I mean, they're. Yeah. Yeah. I think their quarterback needs to retire now, though. I'm He's, afraid you know. you're right. I'm afraid. <laughs> there's, there's two of them. There's a Mr. Tom Brady and then him. They yeah, both need to go ahead. You know, I, I, Tom Brady especially. We'll be like, man, oh, what, man. Are you, what are you trying to prove, man? You've got like 18 <laughs> Super Bowls. Like, yeah. can't you just take it home, man? Let somebody else have a chance. <laughs> yeah, what well, well, now they're trying to get him to go to San Francisco uh, to be the quarterback uh, for next year. And I'm like, listen, no. He yeah. needs to go sit in his retirement home and be done. Yeah. And do his, his – Look at all of his rings on his face. Yeah. Well, he's going. He's already got the analyst job for Fox. They've already right. got him a contract signed ready to go as soon as he retires. I'm like, just go ahead and retire and do it, man. You don't have to do anything. That'd be where I was at, Buzz. Yeah, for sure. Well, all right, so let me ask you this, Brad. Do you have I know some people do, and if you if you don't, I mean if you did, would you have a New Year's resolution that you're looking at having or um man, well, you know, I already uh, I've already kind of started uh I, I didn't want to wait till New Year's to start trying to take better care of my of my physique, you know, Come uh, on. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't want to wait because everybody does it New Year's Day. So I, I had to, uh, I think Thanksgiving week, I, I ate so, <laughs> we had three different Thanksgivings. Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, when we got done with that, I was like, man, I got to start, you know, because I've been slacking in, in uh, you know, exercise and stuff. So I've already started with that. But I guess my New Year's resolution would be to, um, get more of get more original music done um i told somebody that to get more uh you know of my because i've got demos just stacked up of songs that i'd like to do but just haven't found time to get them done and put them out and um you know i did uh, a song called kingdom of me um that was just me um i wrote it and um wayne hahn helped me with it in Nashville, got a big video done, mm -hmm. and uh, it's done well on YouTube and uh, and on Spotify and all that. Um, so I'm hoping to. Um, it's it's kind of like a, a rock opera type song, but I'm hoping to do more of my own music, you know, to to put out and um, because that was ultimately one of the main goals of starting my channel was to have a place to promote my music. So. That's a that's a big one for me in the new year is to to put more emphasis on, you know, my own putting more original music out. Yeah, I got you. Well, that'd be good too. Well, we're looking we're we're already looking forward to it because if y'all can do uh, songs like you just did, hundred <laughs> yeah, that altered. Uh, I don't know if you were going to top that one, but go ahead. We'll we'll let you try for sure. Well, I appreciate <laughs> it. And honest, I don't know the exact date, but we've got a new. A uh, hundred different altars that we put out as a single, but it's part of a new record we're putting out at the oh good uh, toward the beginning of the year. So um, be on the lookout for that as well. Oh, most definite, most definite. Yeah. So I do have one other question. I was telling, I told Jamie I was going to ask you. Growing up, you see, you know, you've, you know, you've heard your dad, your family, you've listened to gospel music all your life. Is there one group that you've that you could go to and go, that's my group besides your family. I know, you know, but is there one group that you've always said, you know, that's, that, they're just, they're it. They're my favorite group. Uh, it's hard to narrow it down to one. Um, I know as a, as a kid, I used to listen to so much mm -hmm. Je Jeff and Sherry and, uh, Jeff and Sherry Easter and, um, uh i'm assuming you're, you're talking about in the in the southern gospel genre right the, we can do we can do any of it buddy go ahead well, you, it, just, it, you just talk because i'll tell you right now who was it was ernie haas and signature sound they said they listened to um not ernie haas but uh 
what was it, Dustin? Was it Dustin Dole? Dustin Dole. I and uh, but they they like Phil Collins. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. I thought, yeah. I, well, uh, in in the Southern Gospel world, of course, there's a ton. I mean, I mm-hmm. could go on. As far as right now, I I love um, the sound. The, yeah. the sound, the stuff they're putting out is great. Uh, as far as in general, as far as go to in the car, driving down the road, uh, I love the classics. I love the Beatles. Uh, I love um, Queen. I love. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about classic. Uh, that is classic. Stevie Wonder. Yeah, uh, I love all of that stuff. And, uh, and I do, I mean, I, we talk about the acapella stuff. I listen to that. Uh, I, I'd listen to that on my own time as well. Um, I'm, I'm a big, uh, I, I have a seventies and eighties playlist that my wife will tell you when I'm driving down the road, that's kind of, that's kind of what I play. I bet, uh, I bet journeys somewhere in that, in that absolutely, genre. Oh, I figured so. Aerosmith. Aero <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, there is some of the the current stuff, and a lot of country, a lot of country. I was, uh, you know, that that '90s country. I was always big into that. So i i lo- today's country. I'm trying to find some stuff. Chris Stapleton. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. Chris Stapleton. Yeah. Um, you know, there'll be a song here or there that I like, but I've I've listened to a lot of different kinds of music. Um, pretty much everything but heavy metal and it's not that i you know if you like heavy metal that's great it's not my it's just not my thing but um if i can't understand it i'm not gonna listen to it (laughs) (laughs) Uh, but man i listen to gosh here lately there's just so much i listen to so much that it's hard to narrow it down i listen to a lot of maverick city music in the in the christian music world Mm. bill wickham um my wife has got me listening to this band called Greta Van Fleet. My, she, that's the thing. Her music interest, I'm saying her because she's probably can hear me right now because she's in the kitchen. <laughs> her music interest, the bands that she listens to are like bands I've never heard of in my life. I mean, yeah. she'll, she'll turn on this band. I'm like, who is this? You know, she's like, oh, it's this band from New Orleans that, yeah. you know, and, you know, they have. 20 followers on Spotify and, you know, but, uh, yeah, so her music tastes very different from mine. When she's got control of the radio in the car. I mean, it gets, it exposes me to new music. So right. I love that. Mm-hmm. But then when it's me, we're listening to, she listens to the classics too, but I'm always just turning on the, the classics and the, and the, you know, we were actually talking last night at work about, um, country music and I was talking to an older guy and he was like, this new country stuff. What they need, that's for the birds. Throw it out. Let's get some George yeah. Jones back in here and Randy Travis. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know they're uh they got a big event locally that they do every summer and every year it's a country music event. They announce the lineup and I'm always like, Man, I don't know. Yeah. You know, just, but like, I've never attended it and then they put out the lineup for this time and Chris Stapleton's gonna be there and I'm like, Ooh. That might be enough to get <laughs> yeah, that. yeah. The other, and then Travis Trent, I think, is going to be there too. Oh yeah, like, oh yeah. Okay. And now so you're that, getting somewhere. <laughs> that, might, that might be enough to get me to buy a ticket. But well, sorry, that was a loaded answer to you. No, no, that's it. Yeah, that's fine. That's what. Um, and I want, I do want to give a shout out to a lot of the the uh, Southern gospel artists because I, you know, um, love what Ernie's been doing. Um, triumphant, like they're. They've they've created their own genre of, of yeah. gospel music. They're they're mm-hmm. doing some really cool stuff. Joseph uh, Habedank, I love him and and his music. He's got a he's also got his own carved out his own niche kind of he has in, mm-hmm. in there. And um, you know a lot a lot of I, I hate to start naming because I always leave somebody out. But uh, my friends the Perrys have always been a go to uh, for me. Love listening to their old stuff, their new stuff's always, always really good. Um, and, and honestly, when we signed with Stowtown, it's allowed me to listen to some artists that, you know, I hadn't listened to much before, like the Irwins, my friends, the Irwins, they're, uh, they're really good. And, um, so, 
there's a there's a lot of interesting stuff going on in the in the genre right now because yeah. uh a lot of people bringing new things to the table which i think is good you know some people don't like that but i think it's good i think um you know if every other genre can have different sub yeah, yeah that's it, right you know, why can't we too you know yeah mm -hmm. and and i'm i'm that one that i like i like the traditional Sure. Not 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 so concrete that we're going back to the statesman, um, you know things like that. But um, you know even musicality. But I also understand that it's it's either going to have to adapt or it's going to have to die. And yeah. you know I, I think I, if I get beyond myself, I feel like you know they're going in the right direction. You know they're trying different things, like you mentioned. Uh, triumphant quartet and you you nailed it they're almost they're on their own genre you know mm -hmm. as far as uh soloist you know when i immediately when i think of soloist i think of ivan parker because he's been doing it for so long mm -hmm. um you think of mark lowry even you know years ago brian free was on his own and things like that and and i'm not a soloist fan like i like all of those guys but you know I, I wouldn't necessarily listen to them just by themselves but joseph i could listen to him all day every day yeah. because there's something different and i don't know if it's because of the songs because of his writing skill his presentation his history i don't know what it is but there's something that draws people to him uh I, even the fact that he's young too that, that helps yeah. as well do you think, I mean, I've always thought with Joseph, because we talked about earlier how there's a lot of topics that we feel like we can't talk about and we can't let people know that we're actually humans who just do mm -hmm. human type things. And Joseph has a very public testimony. That's right. I mean, yeah. it's, you know, he's able to, I hate to even say this, but he, he's able to get away with, if you can't see me, I'm doing the quote unquote, mm -hmm. get away with talking yeah. about dealing with addiction and rehab and things like that. Yeah. And I think it's a breath of fresh air. Not that he had to go through that, of course, but right. the fact that, you know, we can just talk about real people stuff and mm -hmm. stuff that real people deal with. I, you know, he, you know, he always does his uh, songs about, you know, dealing with addiction and rehab and it always, you know, gets a great, response from from everybody even, right you know because addictions you know something that everybody's dealt with in their life either through a family member or something mm -hmm. so um i think you know you can't ever go wrong with just yeah you know, if there's anything whether you're talking about traditional or progressive or whatever we just probably need more realness that's right you know mm -hmm. just more you know not trying to yeah i'm not saying you get up there and celebrate you know sure. whatever it is you're going through mm -hmm. but um i think he's he's kind of been a breath of fresh air because he's you know he feels like he's just being his authentic self up there right. you know you know there's been in 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 the past in southern gospel there's been different quote unquote scandals that has been kind of you know brushed under the on the table and i listened sure. to a podcast with southern gospel news podcast darren sutherland I, i'm sure you know him um he uh or or that podcast did an interview with joseph and I, I feel like i've heard him say this but when when he first came to grips with addiction gerald wolf told him you have got to tell this yeah you, you've got to tell it and tell the truth and, you know, he does this, and I'm not sure that he actually wrote this particular song, um, but the Perrys, when he was with them, the Potter Knows the Clay. Uh, I feel like that was one of the first songs that he was involved with, whether it's singing or writing, because I don't know who wrote it. But then Grip of Grace, uh, again, with the Perrys, and then his first album, Beauty of the Blood, um, on his first solo album absolutely gut-wrenching because the blood can cover all yeah. of those things uh, i think it may have been on that same album when he talks about when the lights go down yeah. and there's a there's a lyric in there am i am i the man that they all think i am when the lights go down right. and um he can get away with that and i think anybody could if they would be real yeah. and not just being cliche right. with mm -hmm. it um mm -hmm. you know I, I was saved when i was 
12 years old. So there's not a lot that I have been involved in. You know, I've never drank alcohol. I've never done drugs. None, none of those things. So sometimes if I say, you know, God can deliver you from alcohol, I know that's true, but I've never experienced that deliverance. Yeah. And so I think sometimes even in Southern gospel or any other genre, we can be cliche with those messages. Un yeah. Unlike we, we circle completely around, unlike a hundred different altars. Um, that's very pointed and it's, it is true, but it's, it's not cliched. Mm -hmm. And especially when you watch the video, you see, you, you see a guy that's just distraught because right. financially he's ruined. You, you, you see all of these things. So absolutely amazing. You're exactly right in, in what you said. I, I'll ask this last question and you got to go. Um, you've mentioned different solo things that you've done. And I'm not backing you into a corner. I know right now you're 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 with your family in Southern Gospel, but how would you how would you categorize yourself as a soloist? Oh man, that's difficult because um, the last couple of things I've put out. I mean, most of my stuff is, uh, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's definitely got a faith based message. You know, the song I mentioned, "Kingdom of Me." Mm -hmm um it it is all about faith and and things like that and it's heavy you know it's right. kind of in your face but it's uh it's all about faith the last couple songs you know i've done a couple of songs just about life and you know i did a song called just be bored which is about you know just cherishing time with your loved ones and and things like that so not exactly something you're going to get up singing church not because it's inappropriate it's just yeah. not you know, um, and then I actually yeah, did a fun little song that I wrote called uh, Music from the Old Days, which is about the classics and, and paying tribute to that. Okay. So, I mean, it's just kind of, I, I like to think I'm just, I'm just doing songs about life and, you know, things that are important to me. And sometimes, you know, of course, that's going to be faith, the most important thing. You're going right. to sing about that. Sometimes I'll sing a song about my wife or, you know, a song about, you know, spending time with my nieces or something. Um, so, I mean, I'm just kind of putting out music that speaks to me and, yeah. uh, you know, and like I said, with YouTube and, and things like that, you know, I, I found that they're, they're willing to check it out, you know, whatever it is, you know, I think there's no substitute for just saying, Hey, this is important to me. This is mm -hmm. a song that reflects who I am as a person and people are interested in that. Right. So, Okay. Um, yeah, that's just kind of, kind of what I'm doing, uh, solo wise. Okay. Well, Brad, thank you so much for being with us today, and please tell your new bride, Miss Emily, we said thank you for oh, letting us just, borrow she you. Just, she just stepped out to get us some coffee. Oh, so. okay. <laughs> Lord right. bless her for that. Either. Yeah, <laughs> we, we can't even talk about coffee right now because I'm I'm drinking water out of my coffee cup. Oh, so, wow. <laughs> but uh, man, thank you again so much. Hopefully, we can do this again. But congratulations oh. on a hundred different altars, and uh, we you. look forward to your next single. But this album, uh, I know it's I, I know it's great. So thank you so if much. You don't, if you don't win you. an award for that song, I'm boycotting. <laughs> <laughs> Not my award show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. All right. Thank, well, thank you, you sir. guys for having me on. Yes, sir. All right, Reggie. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate it. Um, I hope that you have a good week. A Merry Christmas to both of you. And uh, we'll get out of here by doing it like this. Uh, up in Sevierville, we've got Mr. Reggie Taylor somewhere in an undisclosed bunker in Alabama, Mr. Brad Steele. Thank you so much for being here with us. Guys, be sure to check us out on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, all of those good things. And we'll put all of these uh, links in the show notes. Until next time, guys, this has been Southern Gospel Point of View.